Welcome to the first official meeting of the Lemonade Crew. That's you. <laughs> um, we were kind of brainstorming names and thinking of things, and um, this this Lemonade Stand to me is like this pivotal anchor of community spirit, which is what I want this music to inspire, and what I want you guys to feel when you hear it, or when you're at a show, or when you're just you know walking around and you need to feel like encouraged or inspired and you want to put on a song it's like i want you to feel that you're not alone in it you know and to me when i think of like a little kid at a lemonade stand you just kind of put aside all the fears and insecurities that's going on and you're like looking somebody in the eye going hey how's your day could i have a cup of lemonade and then all of a sudden your day just kind of turns around you know what i mean that's what i want us as a group to really kind of represent and that's where this name comes from. I mean, it's also a line in the song, but it's mostly <laughs> to be this pivot of um, community spirit. And I mean, this is crazy. This is the first time we're getting to do this. And you guys blew me away because we were going to do this in a dressing room with like 15 of you or 20 of you max. And we put these things on sale. I was like, wait, what? They're gone? And then you were like tweeting and sending messages going, wait, I want to come. And so then we're like, we called up our dear friends at the Opry and we're like, do you have any other room you could put us in for like more people? And then all of a sudden we're in this massive room, so this is really exciting. Um, so thank you for blowing my mind and showing up. I think we have people from Germany here, is that right? That's it's so cool! So I see, are, do you know each other? Yes. Oh good, okay good. I'm like, you should be friends, you're both from Germany. That's so cool. We have people from Canada here. Yes, woo woo, okay good, this is awesome. My homeland, it's great to hear that. Uh, Australia, yes, it's crazy. And we have people from 17 different states here, which is wild. So I just wanna say thank you, because I love seeing you guys on the road, I love hearing from you. Anytime you send me a message, a lot of times you guys send me like really incredible, courageous things that are going on in your life. and. Just want you to know that I never take that lightly, that it always means so much to me and it inspires me to keep writing and to know that there's like a mission and a purpose in this and I just really wanted to talk about the fact that we're in this together because to me my dream is to get to keep writing songs and singing them for people and none of that means absolutely anything without you and I can't wait to hopefully look back 20 years from now when we're like doing a film club party way out there or something. We'll be like, remember the first meeting with the Lemonade Crew, right? So thank you guys for believing in this mission. I can't even express to you how much that really means to me. I said you love you, take it out in your mouth. I will climb just to find my way. trail through a forest in the dark Pave a path to get back to where you are It was really exciting to get to put this song out just a little while ago. Um, I had a blast writing this with a couple friends of mine just talking about holding on to the good parts, you know, in the stories that we go through. It's like when you can always see the little bit of silver lining just a little bit. But I the roses right by my bed and they should make me lonely but I'm smiling instead cause you weren't the one babe but you were the closest I let the rest of us go but I can't throw it. Yes, please ask a question. I would love that. Do you have a bucket list songwriter that you'd like to co-write with? Dolly Parton. Uh, <laughs> I could list a million, but let's see who else. Um, I think Ed Sheeran would be really fun to write with someday. I still haven't written with Brandy Clark yet. Or Caitlin Smith, they're both on my dream list oh. very soon. That would be really cool. This town's amazing. Like, I know you guys have a heart for songwriters, and it's like such a special place to be inspired by 
the art of that. And I remember I made my first trip here when I was like 14. And one of the first places we went to was Bluebird. I was like, man, I gotta keep coming back here. And we came to the Opry on that same trip. And um, I still, I'm like, I love looking at the Bluebird website, like just which of my heroes are like playing, you know what I mean? Even if I'm not in town, <laughs> like what's happening at the Bluebird? Such a good place. Um, but yes, those are dream collaborators on my list for sure. Thank you for asking the question. I love that. So actually this song was written after, shortly after I'd moved to Nashville, I was staying at this little rental place, kind of at a friend's like little side studio that they have at their house. And I had come home from a songwriting session and sat down at this little coffee table. And this is like my first time living away from home that far. I mean, Grand Prairie is just like a short 45 hour drive down the road. And I was thinking about home and my family and missing everybody. and. I think a lot of times for me, songwriting feels a lot like it's just like a vessel situation. And I feel like this song in particular is one of the clearest moments of that to me, where I was just sitting by myself and I was thinking of my great grandmother who, man, she was a remarkable woman. Like, I miss her so much. She's amazing. She'd come out to all these shows, rain or shine, she'd be sitting right there with you guys right now in the front. and. Um, She'd bring her lawn chairs out to these like little festivals I used to play when I was like 10 or 11. She'd be drinking her lucky beer because it was real cheap. And <laughs> then she'd steal everybody else's, you know, Bud Light beer and everything. And we played cards. She taught me how to play cribbage and all these games. And, and she'd be cooking for everybody and like having parties with everyone. You know, that generation is just, there's something special about the way they look out for everybody. And, um, she had recently passed and I was thinking about her and just kind of sat down at this coffee table and was missing her and all of a sudden it's like maybe 15 minutes later there were like four verses on this piece of paper in front of me and just kind of sat there and cried for a second and I was like well that was really fun thank you so much for that healing I think songs bring a lot of healing on their way too sometimes this one definitely did for me and on the record this song is one pass so we sat down kind of just to rehearse it. I'm sitting there, Jay Joyce, my producer, is playing electric, and Jackson Hargrove, my guitar player, the three of us are just sitting in Jay's studio, which is a church. And we kind of like played it once and looked at each other and we're like, what just happened? And then we like thought, okay, well now we'll go like record the song. And so we went to go play it again and we ended up just shaking our heads and going, no, we gotta just leave that moment that just happened in this church as it is. So when you hear it on the record, it's, that's the moment, just so you know. But here we go. When I meet my maker at the open golden gate, he's gonna welcome me home where it turns. stare into his eyes the ones that I've been seeking the ones that never left my side I promise there's there's lots of tempo on this project as well but it's cool to get to just like hang out in our Opry living room today and tell some stories and sing some songs but I'll play this one for you guys um and then we'll listen to some other ones. But this is just, it's seriously, it's a crazy dream. You know, I was like this little kid. I see Bella back there. I was just like Bella's age, hanging out, sitting in the back seat, listening to the radio, and um, dreaming of the day that maybe someday there'd be a song of mine coming through those airways. And the fact that this is actually happening, this is real life, it's a crazy thing. My parents are here, which is really cool. And my dad helped me drive to Nashville on our 45 hour trek. And we call home about a lot of things, you know, where I'm talking to them and talking about how I locked my keys in my truck or what I tried to cook for dinner that just did not work out. And then like call home about exciting things. And the last few years in Nashville has been a lot of exciting things. And we have this thing that we say it's a good day for ice cream. 
It's been a lot of ice cream, and it's so <laughs> awesome. And I feel like this is one of these days that I will call and be like, you guys aren't going to believe it. All these people showed up, and we kicked off this community here, and I'm just glad that we'll just go for ice cream. We don't have to call about it, so that's good. Um, but this one is single and was inspired by a drive I took with my mom going furniture shopping and sat in my apartment and saw this girl standing on the side of the interstate with a cardboard sign and moment just really stuck with us wondering what happened to her and uh, I'm really grateful for the way that you guys are turning this song up up there and telling your friends about it and posting and blogging about it and um, you're lifting it up it's literally we're, we're just we're doing this together and I really love and appreciate you guys so much. There she was somebody's best friend laughing all back. She was somebody's sister counting at the lemonade stand. Probably somebody's high school first kiss. Or dancing in a gym where the kids all talk about Sunday plans. Now this light will turn green on hand a couple dollars. 